for cinema. And when the war ended, when World War II ended, some of the principal people from the group theater founded a school for actors, which became the school from which most of the acting that you see now grew out of. The two schools that came out of that, one was called the Actor Studio. How many people have heard of the Actor Studio from television, inside the Actor Studio? When you see this interview of Meryl Streep, it's a television show that uh, generally interviews tons of famous people. The Actor Studio was founded by Cheryl Crawford and Lee Strasberg. Lee Strasberg was a veteran of the American Laboratory Theater and a veteran of the group theater. He was sort of the acting teacher of the group theater. Stella Adler formed another theater uh, called Herb Berghoff Studios. Stella Adler Studio is now part of NYU. Okay? Stella Adler trained a ton of very famous people. Okay? Lee Strasberg trained a lot of very famous people. They also trained a whole generation of acting teachers who then went out to colleges and trained a lot of other people who later became famous people like Renee Zellweger, etc., etc. Okay? So if you poke down into people's backgrounds, you will see that they came from a college acting school, and if you look at what that teacher learned and how they learned it, you will see these threads that connect back to the group theater and Stanislavski. Okay? Our discipline of acting in this country today is basically formed from these concepts. Now, why is that important to you? Well, it's important from the point of view that this style that we've talked about, this sort of American cinema style, this American theatrical style, just very natural, all about the action that's going on, what people are doing, less about what they're saying, sometimes. This happened to find a perfect fit in the style of acting. Okay? Because one of the foundational things that Richard Bolosowski originally said and Stanislavski originally said was it's all about what you're doing. It's not just about what you're saying. In other words, I can say to Robert, shut up. The question is, what am I trying to do to Robert? Am I trying to be his buddy and be cool with him? I could do it that way. Am I trying to uh, demean him and condescend to him? I could do it that way. In other words, given the circumstances, what am I doing with what I'm saying? That became the focus rather than how I'm saying it. Okay? or showing the audience that I'm having some kind of particular uh, emotional response. Are we over time? We're not, are we? No. Just walking out of class because you can. Um, so does this make sense to you in terms of what you've seen on stage or on screen? In other words, if I have uh, a moment with two actors, okay, if I am... There seems to be an almost infinite variety of ways I can say something. Correct? Now, if I have that same moment and I am uh, on film, where's my focus going to be? What, what, would, what would I try to accomplish as an actor? If, I'm, if you're set in a situation and you're, you're saying, okay, you've got to have this uh, friendship scene with your professor where you were uh, um, trying to convince your professor that you really think he's a cool guy so he can give you a break on this last quiz. What would you be trying to do? What, were you, what would your attention be as a performer? Let's say. To establish rapport. Establish a rapport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ex very sensible thing. In real life, that's what you would try to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. You wouldn't think, uh, I want people watching me to know that I'm anxious about this. Mm -hmm. Right? That would be what we consider to be sort of thinking externally, okay? Again, if you're on a great big stage, thinking externally wouldn't be a bad idea, right? Because we want, you would be concerned with people getting what was happening in that moment, right? In order for the narrative of the show to make sense. But if you're not worried about that person getting it, 
and you're only worried mostly about it being very real with you, then you would do the thinking that you just suggested. Mm -hmm. Right? Your attention would be on me, not on you. Right? And this is what we call getting our focus outside ourselves. Okay? In other words, my focus is on the object of my attention. That object could be, uh, you know, the gun that I'm cleaning, or it could be the guy who I'm about to hand the gun to because I want him to go and, uh, you know, kill this guy. All right? So maybe I'm here looking about this and I go back and forth, but I'm, I'm actually cleaning this gun in such a way to get him interested in taking the gun and doing the job for me. But all of those things... None of that has to do with me thinking about how the audience is perceiving me. That is gone. Okay? And there's a lot of different ways that Stanislavski described this. Public solitude is one of them. Public solitude. Think about that. Whether you've ever experienced public solitude. Have you ever been so wrapped up in something where you've actually forgotten that you were in public? Has that ever happened to you? Can you? You're nodding your head, or kind of. Yeah. That's happened? What, what were the circumstances in which you experienced public solitude? Only if they're not really super graphic. Right. <laughs> I don't know. You can't think of them now. You were nodding your head, but now, now you can't think of them. I feel like the general one. Huh? Hitting a specific one. Go ahead. Like you're doing yard work and like you're focusing on doing. Like yeah, you're just so wrapped up in a, a yeah. task. Yeah, and then you turn around like everyone's staring at you. What about with a person, John? Oh, I was thinking um, when you like listen to music on the way to class, you start to like right, you just walk wrapped a up certain in your way. Own thoughts? I'm doing a fight in public with somebody. Have you? Okay. <laughs> I certainly have. Not, right? Not physical, but like verbal. No, like, verbal, right? right? Yeah. yeah, where you're so like in such an <laughs> argument, you just totally tune out like how loud you're talking, whatever. How many people have experienced that? It's really awkward. Wow, lots of them, because we're very expressive working class people. We, we tune people out very easily, right? <laughs> and that's great, okay? You're so wrapped up in it. Uh, how many people have been so wrapped up in a positive way that they have forgotten where they were? Okay? I did that for four years, married to my wife. I forgot where I was. All of a sudden, I woke up, she was divorcing me. I'm like, oh, here I am. I'm in Plymouth. Okay? This sucks. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you just get so wrapped up in somebody that's so beautiful and so you're so in love with them or whatever and all of a sudden you're like, you know, where am I, right? And that can be a good thing or, you know, when you fight with them, a bad thing, okay? That's what Stanislavski wants you to do, okay? That is incredibly compelling to watch, particularly on film. And as the theaters got smaller, okay, Yes, many 